doing all the comedy and stuff, I mean, did that help? Was that kind of like the help with the acting and all these other mediums you're part of? I mean, did the comedy like give you this foundation? For sure. You know, I like I studied uh I studied acting, you know, I made I majored I went to college and I majored in radio and television broadcast. So I you know, I had planned to be a news anchor of some sort. I actually had gotten a job at a CBS affiliate uh in in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, the t- little small town where I went to school. And so, you know, uh, and that was early on. So this is mid mid to late eighties. And shows like Access Hollywood and this kind of entertainment news was coming on. And so it was like starting to be reporter jobs that were lighter. You know, you weren't like doing the heavy news thing. You were kind of still being a reporter, still being a journalist, but you you do something more entertainment based. And so, you know, I was really launching up for that. And each network, each station started to have their own correspondent for that. So even in my college town, they had hired me to do that job, like do the fun stories, go out and, you know, make really cool stories of interest. And, and you know, and then so uh, but that that never happened, almost like the, the, like the whiz. I got hired and they never I never was able to go to work. Something ain't came up. And by the time my start date came, my job had lost all its funding. And so they, they had lost the money and they was like, sorry. And so that's when I had to go and regroup. And I went back to St. Louis and, you know, worked in sales and bounced around a little bit and subject was a substitute school teacher. And then, you know, eventually landed at State Farm and, you know, and, and worked there for, uh, but landed at State Farm and discovered I could do stand up kind of simultaneously. So the moment I get a, a really good, secure job that I can make it on, I find my passion. And so yeah. I just ride them two together until yeah. one became like, All right. cool, and I, I, I trust now I can go and take off and be this comedian. You know, uh, maybe your next book would be, that never happened, but this <laughs> did. Ah. <laughs> That never happened, but this hey, thing. Man, I got a whole kid on there, too. I got a kid on there that I don't have, but that's a bloody <laughs> joke in my family because everybody goes, who is this person, Dad? Like, I was like, I was like they, got me, they got me with a whole other daughter named Tinky Flop. We don't know where she comes from. The comedic thing must have been awesome for when you host. When you host, I've seen you host. I mean, you know, it, you're just sitting there teed up to, you know, and you have to be, you have to be clever, of course, depending on who you're talking about, you know. Yeah, you know, you got you usually, you know, you're responsible for being that uh, that that master of ceremony for a night of flow, and then, you know the idea of like, you know, what you bring to the room, what are people are doing, how do you kind of keep this elevated, and, and at the same time move the program along, because that's usually the thing about hosting as well is that there is an agenda <laughs> like you gotta you know like the, these people like gotta be out of this building by 11 o'clock like they I, mean, I don't care how funny you are they're like bro with these union fees <laughs> i'm coming to you like you gotta be wrapping this up so, yeah. so the idea of knowing that you have a, a great responsibility of one elevating the room having the people be energetic and being able to support whatever the message is for that night is you know is a, you know a, a really re- great job to have and as a comedian you know it's great because you get to just be in charge of it and hopefully you know I always say it, it's like riding a stagecoach right like you you got all these horses in front of you and they got all this power and it's your idea to kind of create what what to them feels like you're in charge but they know that they actually the ones in charge they got all the power pulling me but if i if i give you these straps and then and, and i do these things somehow you think i'm running things so that's the thing about being on that stage as a comedian you the maestro of like yo like I, let me take the energy here and if you let if you let them off that's the other thing if you ever let them out of the the and they realize like the the barbarians can run the run the building. Then that's the worst thing you can do as a comedian is give up your room and let people start talking and and then when the crowd start talking to each other and you lose them. It's a very rough thing, man. I, and you know, and we don't have the, you know, we don't even have the the 
the assistants always say of a great of a great drum beat or a guitar riff or something yeah. to help right. people. The microphone. Yeah, and you you got to be like, yo, here it is. This is what I'm saying, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and again, you know, and you know, anybody knows a good oratory when they see one, be it a, you know, a politician or a preacher or anybody that can, like, deliver a message, a good motivational speaker, you know, and then there's people that bore you to death, like a science teacher or somebody that you grew up with, you like, oh, this man, he just can't tell a good story or nothing. Like, come on, man. Like, I need something here. That's why I respect you a lot. You know, I, I was talking to Bill Burr about that a while ago. It was like, God, you know, I'm on stage. If something gets squirrely, I got like all these people around me. We can share it. I got a drum set. You are sitting there with a microphone. Yeah. That's it. I mean, and you don't have a bandmate. You know what I mean? You don't have a teammate. Yeah. It's you, man. And so, like, at this point in your career, I'm sure you, you read the script, but you're so good at being in flow. You can, like, go out of the script, bounce around. But I bet at the beginning it was like, oh, my God, i got to read every word perfect, right? Yeah, of course. Terrified. Yeah, no, and it's one of those things. You're right. You have... You know, you have this this anxiety that, you know, you, if you lose it, like, again, like if you lose that moment and that it goes off the, off the rails, it's the thing that we fear most as comedians because if it goes off the rails, it's very, very hard to get it back on. And, 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 and of course, the larger the crowd, the harder it is, right? right. And so and sometimes it's worse because sometimes small crowds are worse because they actually feel like they're literally there as a part of it. Like, you know, like you mm -hmm. know, comedy clubs, once somebody's drunk or talking, it's just hard to get them back on track. Usually in a bigger crowd, you can like, Hey, all right, cool. Let me get this side of the room to basically shut that guy down. Yeah. 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 But it's, Dude, yeah. Small room. It can be, it can be tough. 